So you're saying there's a chance. What's up? It's Dan Richo and Randeep Janda with Canucks this week. Randeep, the Canucks are rolling, and despite all the odds, they are back in the playoff race. Is that what happens when we go away for a couple of weeks on YouTube? The Canucks start rolling <laughs> off wins six in a row, and I can't believe I'm saying this because I've said Vince McMahon style, there's no chance in hell that they're going to come back into this. They are back. And to me, this is a pretty unbelievable turnaround here from the Vancouver Canucks. Listen, Bruce Boudreaux has had his effect on this team, but we thought, okay, this is a nice story. Are they going to actually get back into the playoff mix? They're there, Reach. They're back in it. They got 86 points now. They're trailing Vegas by one. They got games in hand, uh, one game on hand in, uh, on Vegas. They're trailing LA by four points. They're officially back in this. It's uh, it's crazy because prior to this six game win streak, they had lost nine of the previous 12 games <laughs> and somehow some way they have found their way back into this. Uh, and look, some of it is uh, teams have fallen back to the pack. Obviously the LA Kings have given up a lot of points to the Canucks in this stretch that they've been on. And the Nashville Predators haven't been playing as well. And Vegas hasn't taken the reins as we all thought they would. But this Canucks team just won't go away. Randeep, they're like the undertaker, man. Like just when you think he's done, he does that crazy sit up. And it's like, oh my God, he's back from the dead. My God, it's the undertaker. That That's, that's the Canucks right now. They just, they won't go away. And that's why this run has been so fun even though they've still got a long shot to make the playoffs and they've got to win basically all of their games, maybe they have what one loss left on the schedule. Oh, for sure. And uh, we're back with a lot of wrestling references. So get ready for that. <laughs> but in terms of the schedule ahead, uh, let's look back a little bit first, before we get looking ahead at the schedule since March 1st, they've got a six, six, seven points percentage. That's unbelievable. That's really solid. It's kind of what we thought they'd have to do if they wanted to get back in the mix. They've got a top 10 scoring team in the NHL over the last month and a bit. They've allowed, you know, amongst the top five goals against, and I'm talking good defense here, not bad defense. That's how good they've been. Second best power play behind Colorado. And their PK, yes, that miserable PK is even top 10 now. So that tells you how far they've come. Now, what does that mean moving forward here? Can you continue to pick up wins like this against a schedule Listen, it's not going to be easy, right? You've got Ottawa coming up here. But after that, Minnesota and Calgary, Dan, are the two games that worry me if I'm a Canucks fan. Based on the fact that we've seen those types of styles and those types of games, I know there's that 7-1 win against Calgary, but we know Calgary wasn't functioning right that night. Minnesota and Calgary, tough matchups. You have to probably ideally win both of them. But even losing one of those games, Dan, that's not a good situation to be in. You might have to win out all of them just to be safe. So that one loss that you say, I, I get it. That's realistic because they're two really solid teams. But even that, that hurts you big time. You got LA and then you got Edmonton to finish off the year. One loss there is the absolute maximum you can handle. But even that to me is pushing the limits. Well, and they need some help. Not, not a ton of help. Like they, in theory, they do hold their own destiny um, because they, they can get to 98 points, but you're not expecting to win all of these games. I mean, the, the, as we said, maybe one loss on the schedule that would max them out at 96 points for the season. So what do they need? You know, LA is in that third spot in the Pacific right now. They can get to a maximum of a hundred that one game between the Canucks and Kings Canucks have to absolutely win that and hope that the Kings lose two other games, at least two other games outside of the one that they play against the Vancouver Canucks. Right now, the Canucks have a better points percentage than the Vegas Golden Knights, so they hold the cards in that conversation. Dallas, I think they're in. You know, they've got an easy enough schedule. They need three wins over the next six games. They should be able to do it. Nashville is the interesting one here in the wild card because they play Calgary here on Tuesday, but then their final five games of the season come in seven days. And over that course, they have just one non-playoff team. That is the Arizona Coyotes. So a path to three more wins to 97 points for the Nashville Predators seems a lot more difficult. The Canucks need two teams to fall out 
here. And it's not all that impossible when you go through the schedules. Yeah, Nashville is a really good shout because even though they look like they're in a pretty decent spot, you mentioned their schedule. They got a back-to-back coming up against Tampa Bay and Minnesota. Of the two teams in the NHL that you probably don't want to back to back against, Tampa is definitely in that conversation. And Minnesota, the way that they play, is probably in that conversation as well. So very difficult schedule. The team I go back to, though, and I think if you're the Canucks, you have to zero in on this team, are the LA Kings. Even though they have a very soft schedule. Listen, Anaheim twice, Chicago, Seattle, and Vancouver to end off the season. They're not playing any playoff team. Look at their record in the last 10, though. They haven't been doing so well. They haven't no. been, you know, picking up maximum points or anywhere near it in their last 10. They've won four games. So this is a team right now, soft schedule, but here's the problem for the LA Kings. They've lost to Chicago this season, uh, this season in the last month, and they've also lost to Seattle. So are they beatable? You damn right. They are yeah. absolutely beatable by those teams. So to me, I don't look past the LA Kings soft schedule, but we've seen in the last little bit, those injuries have made them a soft team to play themselves. Yeah, the the injuries have really uh, mounted for the LA Kings, and they're just trying to hang on as best they can right now for the end of the season. A final thing here on the Canucks. Now, what's been the biggest factor in the Canucks getting back into this race? You know, Bruce, there it is. We've talked about that and the magic of Bruce Boudreaux through the end of this season since he took over from Travis Green. But the biggest thing that is here right now for the Canucks that wasn't there early in the season is Elias Pettersson. He is scoring at close to or over 110 point pace since the All-Star break. He's up to 18 goals since the All-Star break. He has just been on an absolute tear. The player that we all expected to see coming into this season has finally arrived, Randy. No, he hasn't. He's been putting up unbelievable numbers in the last little bit. doesn't matter where you play him. Whether it's on the right wing, left wing, center without Bo Horvat, he's getting the job done. He is a confident player, and he's making those special plays that in his first two years in the league, you saw it. You didn't maybe see it consistently enough, whereas this year you're saying, hey, if this is a full season, and considering you know after Bruce Boudreaux took over, he's a 100, almost 10-point player in a full 82-game season. That's how well he's played with Boudreaux. But I want to give Boudreaux a show. And sticking with the wrestling theme, <laughs> For every Hulk Hogan, there's also a Jimmy Hart. And Bruce Boudreau is that Jimmy Hart in this situation. We always lay blame on the coach when things go bad. And Travis Green, listen, there's a lot of things I'm sure he would have tried to change about this team. But Bruce Boudreau walked in, changed the entire culture of the organization alongside Jim Rutherford. And in that locker room, you know, he's got that reputation of being the star whisperer. He did that in Anaheim, Minnesota, Washington, wherever he's gone, whether it was a two or three year shelf life, he made it happen. And that has happened yet again here in Vancouver. I talked about that second best power play in the league, a top 10 PK. Sure, he's got coaches helping him out with that, Jason King and Bradshaw and, of course, Scott Walker. But I look at what he's been able to do to get the most out of his coaches, the most out of his players, and the most out of this market. Bruce Boudreau, to me, in addition to Elias Patterson, deserves a lot of credit for this turnaround. Now, what I'll say about that is if we're sticking with the Undertaker reference, then Bruce Boudreau has to be Paul Bearer rather than Jimmy Hart. No, he's too, he's too, way too happy to be <laughs> Paul Bearer. Come on, man. Jimmy Hart's the right answer. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, what do you think about the Canucks playoff chances? Let us know in the comments. We respond to as many as we can. Subscribe to Sportsnet video channel, and we'll see you in the next video.